Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. And today, as you can see, I'm starting to get like even more organized and it's not as bad as I thought it was. Well, I mean, I don't know what part of the alphabet is going where, but here we have the Sibelius edition on BIS and it happens to come after R for Rossini and before Shostakovich. Oh, H-I. Oops, it's backwards. Okay, so it's not perfect, but things are sort of clumping together alphabetically, which may make the, the ultimate sorting out of these things a little bit easier. But we are still doing random reviews because these boxes are just yielding all kinds of strange things from different places um, in, my, in my collection and things that I have so much duplication. Oh my God. I have to weed it out somehow, too, as I go. That's going to be a whole nother project. I was just down in the basement measuring, measuring for the new overflow room because I'm going to have to evacuate the old overflow room. And I'm happy to report that there's plenty of space down there if I actually get it like sheetrocked and finished and tidied up in the next year or so. So that's going to be pretty good. I mean, I think I'm going to be in business here. But in the meantime, as I continue to unpack, I have this stuff, which I just pulled out of a box, which is over here to my right. Um, I have to, to balance the thrill of the random pick out of the box with the fact that I've got to find a spot where I can do these things and it doesn't look too terrible. And this one actually, this is actually working pretty well, I think. Actually, I can sit down in my chair. That's kind of new. And um, I'm, I'm freeing up space in this room gradually. So what do we have here? A bunch of very interesting things, actually. First, um, in the letter F, Finzi. Finzi's Cello Concerto and the Grand Fantasia and Toccata for Piano and Orchestra, the Eclogue for Piano and Strings with Tim Hugh Cello, Peter Donahoe Piano, and the Northern, Symph the Northern Symphonia under Howard Griffiths on Naxos. This is a terrific disc for all of Finzi's concerted works, except, of course, the clarinet concerto. And, you know, the cello concerto is, is one of those 20th century masterpieces for the instrument that nobody does. I mean, I confess, it does have, it has to be kept moving because it has a lot of sort of elegiac lyricism. And the first movement is not terribly quick. And the slow movement is quite slow and fairly long. And so, you know, you really need to give it some flow um, in order for it to work. You know, the first recording was, uh, of note anyway, was on Lyrita with Yo-Yo Ma, of all people, the young Yo-Yo Ma. And apparently, when asked if he'd do it again, he just sort of snickered and went, hey, 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 hey. no way in a billion years, because, you know, he, but he, was, he played it, and he really should have done it again, actually, for a major label. That would have changed everyone's perception of this work because they're much duller and less interesting and less tuneful and less imaginative and less passionate cello concertos that get plenty of play. Think, for example, Elgar's. Ooh. Anyway, so this is a beautiful recording, and it's, it's really probably the best one out there for the works in question. I, I love it. And the piano pieces, I, oh, I wish Vinci had, you know, actually turned one of these things into a piano concerto, which was evidently one of his intentions. Um, there's also like a piece of an unfinished violin concerto. You know, he, he was only about 50, I think, when he died. You know, 55 of leukemia. It would have been lovely had he been around a bit longer to uh, really, you know, hit his stride in symphonic music. Mostly what he wrote were songs and choral pieces and things like that. But he was a wonderful composer, beautiful composer. And, and this is... This is a great piece, and this is a great disc um, for all of these pieces. So there you go. That was nice to pull out of there from the F section somewhere over there. And then we have, I'm not sure how this got in here, because I don't remember it being mixed up with other things, but maybe it was. It's Prokofiev. I've got a lot of Prokofiev. More than I knew I had. You know, it's one of those things where, where you know, I actually have in the essential pile of Prokofiev. It's not that big. It's like yay long. I measure these things in like inches. So it's like I have about 42 inches of Prokofiev, let's say. But apparently over the years, I've accumulated quite a bit more in various spots. So you hit 
pockets of Prokofiev. So this comes from a Prokofiev pocket. It's the Japanese Sony Ormandy complete Prokofiev recordings that were on Sony, not RCA, of course. And uh, there's some really, really fine stuff in here. You've got one of the great classical symphonies. You've got a symphony number no. five, which I think is not really terribly special. Um, we have The Love of Three Oranges Suite, which is amazing. Lieutenant Kije, which is my reference recording for Lieutenant Kije. We have the fourth symphony, the revised edition, which is a splendid performance. Um, the sixth, which is really, really good and doesn't get any attention. And the seventh. Now, a couple of these are mono. And this whole, this whole thing, some of this was in the Ormandy Mono box, and it could all use a really good cleanup slash remastering. It really could, because the basic sound is good. It just needs to be just polished and shined. It's like, it's like you know, good silver that gets a little tarnished over the years, and you can dip it in that magic solution, and the tarnish comes off. And it's beautiful. But these are these are classic performances, basically. I mean, they really are. Even the ones I don't like so much. I mean, the fifth... I, 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 Ormandy was one of those guys, you know, he tinkered a lot. He fiddled with orchestration. And so, like, the big climax at the end of the first movement of the fifth, we've got... Da, 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 crash! Da, 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 tam, tam, pow! You know, he, he it doesn't come off. And it's funny, because there are moments where he's, like, percussion happy... And moments where they vanish. He was just like Leopold Stokowski in that sense. And actually, a whole generation of conductors who were inveterate tinkerers, even Carrion was like that. You just never knew when what the composer wrote was going to show up and when it was not going to show up. And so in some of these performances, it does and some it doesn't. But by and large, I mean, these were, these were versions by, yeah, these were the ones we grew up on by a conductor who was really to the manner born. And the one disc that I rave about all the time is the one that had the classical symphony, the love for three oranges, and Kije, which is one of the great Prokofiev discs ever. And these Japanese Sony things are, were handy because Sony was busy making a complete mess in the U.S. of its stereo legacy and of its Ormandy legacy. And so the ability to get these was great. And so I got them, and I think I have two of them. Because hmm. I think I see another one that's over, over there somewhere in a shelf because you know some of these things movers are amazing people you know they boxed up some stuff and some stuff that was in smaller shelves they just took you know giant swaths of saran wrap you know plastic wrap and just wrapped everything intact and got a few people to carry them and throw them in a truck so some of the stuff stayed shelved not that it was organized but it was shelved and this is in one of those shelves and i see that shelf right over there so okay Lots of Ormandy Prokofiev. Next, well, here we have the Schulte Bartok box. See, we went from P to B to F. It was, that box is mixed up. Seriously mixed up. But, you know, the truth of the matter is I had my main alphabet and then I had like three or four mini alphabets because if you think I was going to move every single CD in double shelves over one to put one disc in the middle, nah, I didn't do that. I just started another alphabet. And so some of these things are come from that mishmash when they threw them all in the box. And this is one of them, I know for a fact. So what have we got here in the Ormandy? The thing, uh, Ormandy, I mean the Schulte. The thing about the Schulte Bartok stuff is that his LSO earlier Bartok recordings are generally superior to his Chicago Symphony later Bartok recordings where they duplicate. And, and that you just have to keep in mind. And for these... Um, let's see, this is how many? Seven CDs. Are there, do you get both concerto for orchestras? Usually they preferred the Chicago digital remakes. And I understand they were more famous on stuff, but they weren't better. The London Symphony stuff was better. And it even sounded better than those early digitals. So we've got, let's see, the concerto for orchestra, the dance suite, and the music for strings, percussion, and celesta, all with Chicago. And they, he did all of that stuff with the LSO, markedly superior. And then we have the Miraculous Mandarin Suite, the Divertimento, Hungarian Sketches, Romanian Folk Dances, all with Chicago. Well, we did some of that with the LSO, and it was better. Then we have the Cantata Profano with the Budapest Festival Orchestra. Well, that's a really cool piece that never gets played. Some of you have mentioned that. The problem is it's a big, complicated choral work um, that's only, uh, well, let's see, 16 minutes long. That does not argue for 
multiple frequent performances, especially if it's in Hungarian. Sorry. Piano concertos with Vladimir Ashkenazi. Quite good. Quite good. Very, very fine performances. Violin concertos with Kyung Hwa Chung. Also terrific. Very fine performances. Number one is with the Chicago and number two is with the London Phil. Oh, wait a minute. There's such a fabulous picture of Schulte here at his his typical, typical Schulte screaming skull mode, as his nickname was. We have to take a look at this. This you got to see. Look at that. Amazing. There he was. Yes, definitely, definitely looking like he just walked off the set of some sort of, like, you know, Halloween horror comedy thing. Anyway, then we've got Bluebeard's Castle with uh, Kolos Kovats and Sylvia Shash. And um, it, it's it's good, but not as atmospheric and powerful as it could be. It's certainly not a patch on the other DECA classic, the Kertes with Krista Ludwig and Walter Berry. That's the one to get. Yes, indeedy. And then we'll see, oh, we have bonus CD6. Bonus CD6, The Dances of Galanta by Kodai. The Peacock Variations, the Haryano Suite. And Leo Weiner's Serenade for Small Orchestra with the London Phil and the Budapest Festival Orchestra. Now, these are early recordings. 1953, 1954, 1956. Some of them anyway. Some of them are mono. And I think some of them are mono. Yeah, they've got to be. Well, yes, probably. But um, that's early Schulte. And then, yay, we have oh, his other early London Symphony ones, not the stereo ones. They left it out. I don't understand it. You get the dance suite, music for strings, percussion, and celesta, Kodai's Salmos Hungaricus, and Leo Weiner's Prince Songor, and the Kobold introduction and scherzo. Now, this is all with the London Phil and the London Philharmonic Choir, and late, a little bit, is with Chicago, and these are also 1954, 1955, but what they don't include, of course, are his LSO stereo Bartok better performances of the Dance Suite, Miraculous Mandarin Suite, Concerto for Orchestra, and Music for Strings, Percussion, and Celesta. No, they wouldn't do that, would they? So what are you going to do with this box? I have no idea. I, I, I don't think it's terribly essential. If you can get the piano concerto, the violin concerto separately, and the LSO stuff, then you don't need this at all. You really don't. That's the truth. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.